his mouth, I think. Just can't get it to hang right, can we? And young man, while you're down there... <laughs> Mr. Humphreys, would you mind holding the gentleman's rear while I pull from the front? Let him, Mr. Lucas. It's like pulling a Christmas cracker, isn't it? I wonder who's going to get the novelty. <laughs> Name one male actor in a show that was in control in the 70s. Can you name one? John Inman. Yodel, odel, 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 odel. <laughs> what a 70s sitcom especially did was almost combine the idea of a kind of um, pantomimic uh, sensibility, a northern working class musical sensibility, with the idea of, of a very repressed attitude towards sex and sexuality. <laughs> Mr. Lucas, it's Mr. Humphreys, please. Uh, yes, Mr. Great, Mr. Humphreys. Are you free, Mr. Humphreys? I'm free. <laughs> it's just so simple, meaning like I'm free for, you know, whatever you fancy, you know. I've always been quite adamant that uh, Mr. Humphreys wasn't gay. <laughs> We come from Savy Village. Oh, where is that? Hoftos. <laughs> All I knew about Mr. Humphreys was that he was very precious and good to his mother and made a very nice Yorkshire pudding. I feel a right fairy. <laughs> Aren't you the lucky one? <laughs> it seemed to have two jokes. It had the gay man saying, I'm free, suggesting uh, sexual availability, and you had Mrs. Slocum's pussy. One of the... Uh, greatest innuendos that's ever been written <coughs> was in um, I Being Served. Mrs. Slocum and her pussy. At least you're here on time, Mrs. Slocum. Time for what? <laughs> there won't be any customers, you know. And what it's doing to my domestic arrangements. <laughs> Having a bath at six o'clock in the morning played havoc with my pussy. <laughs> I, I get asked, what colour is Mrs. Slocum's hair? Really? And I say, it's the same colour as her pussy. And they scream. And with Mrs. Slocum, you know, you would, would have been disappointed after 20 minutes if the pussy wasn't mentioned. So it was a moment of recognition. It's a sort of shared experience that all the people sitting in the living room watching it will laugh together at that point. Has anyone seen my pussy? <laughs> Maybe we all meant, you know, where's her where's nice little cat? cat? <laughs> now, I mean... You see what I'm saying? I mean, that's a real innuendo, isn't it? You know, this sort of thing just isn't fair on my pussy. <laughs> I don't think anybody thought she was looking for her cat. Well, she, no, well, she wasn't looking for her what? pussy. She knows no, where her pussy is. <laughs> I hadn't thought so. Well, think about it. <laughs> A lot of people out there didn't get it. They didn't yeah, know what yeah. it was. Probably just thought it was quite a funny affectation. She had a cat. She loved the cat. Or, perhaps more seriously, the reason why entendre works is you can laugh at stuff, you can laugh at stuff which is sort of smutty and mm. a bit sleazy maybe, but because it's never out in the open, it isn't smutty and sleazy. Mm. It's safe. In many situation comedies, you've got exactly the same people saying virtually the same things week after week in virtually the same situations week after week. Because that's what the public expected. If you deviated from that, they wouldn't watch you anymore. I wrote a series for John Inman called Odd Man Out. Now, I'd always liked John. He was outrageous, he was camp, and it was funny. Oh, my dear, you carry on bending your bananas. I'll straighten it out. <laughs> the whole series was full of double entendres, innuendos. Neville, you fancy a bit. <laughs> what, here? Yes, why not? Strawberry flavour. <laughs> you can like it. Oh, it's very tasty. <laughs> when I look back at stuff now, I can't believe what they did in those shows. You can't believe what they got away with. Whereas at the time, I think this was quite funny, and I maybe got three of the jokes. Yeah. And now I look at it, and frankly, I'm shocked. Tell me, how did he, um... He died on the job. <laughs> yes, he was pulling it at the time. <laughs> and he was referring to The Rock. But every line was slightly naughty. Now, come along. Off to work. <laughs> We were in an age then, the 70s, when, um, let's go for it, you know, let's see how far we can go. We're looking back on a, a period of innocence, and somehow the sort of sauciness of innuendo um, typified that innocence.
but I, as I say, I think the writers of the 80s, the, the, the new wave of writers, just wanted to do it a different way. Where you see Blackadder and you see um, something contemporary where they're, where they're doing, you know, uh, knob jokes or whatever, you're laughing at it, one, for the innuendo, but two, that they're actually parodying what went before. Now, oh, Melty, you really are a beginner. You're not even wearing a pair of comedy breasts. Au contraire, Becca. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, let's wait till we get down to the serious drinking, shall we? Uh, no, this way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Here we are. Good evening. Uh, uh, lads, uh, this is Lord Melchett. Hey! Hey! Uh, give him a large one, will you? Large one? Well, hey, get it? No. Yes, you do, large one. <laughs> Sounds a bit rude. Oh, you large one. Yeah. You may find the conversation a bit above your head at first, Melchie, but, but you'll soon get used to it. Nowadays, you don't need innuendo because uh, you can say anything you like. I mean, the whole point of innuendo was to say a word or pretend to say a word which you were not allowed to say in the first place. Now that you can say anything, why have innuendo? You weren't allowed to say in the 70s, now you can say. And I think it's a bit of a shame. Mad. Mm -hmm. Is it all right if I have a hard on? <laughs> Just as long as you don't poke me with it. I watched Game On because in the um, sort of TV reviews and the newspapers and things, they were saying that it was the man about the house of the 90s. You two bastards been shagging. <laughs> of course not. I'd be stupid. Wouldn't shag him. I found it crass and rude and amazingly unfunny. A lot of sitcoms now are um, shouting and swearing, really. Shock treatment, I think it's called. Innuendo is unnecessary today in a, in a kind of uh, loaded world, a, a world of foie, you know, all that kind of stuff. I don't think you need innuendo. Men Behaving Badly has absolutely no need for innuendo because it's right on the nose. I maintain if you brought either Love Thy Neighbour or Mind Your Language back today, it would gain a big audience and it would be as popular as ever it was. Simple, yeah. happy times with innocent fools. Ah. Well, I long for it, really. Ah, me too. I long for it. Oh! Uh, uh, melon. Actually, it's become a matter of some urgency. I uh, think. <laughs> Don't worry, dear, I shan't keep you long. <laughs> I think one of the reasons why the old 70s sitcoms are popular with particularly students now, today, is uh, I think it's a reaction against PC. I think that's what it is, purely that. They've had enough of being told what they can watch, how they're supposed to talk, what they can, you know, do. And they just want to enjoy themselves. <laughs> You've seen innuendo slipping away yeah, from sitcom. Uh, and, and, you know, actually channel more into mainstream performers such as Judith Clary or Dale Winton who still use all the double entendres and they use it in prime time family hours where you can sort of get away with it, where it's actually still quite fun and quite interesting and quite naughty. We can look back on it fondly now with, a, with an air of nostalgia because it's the comedy we grew up with. In today's travel world, we, we're looking for things that are safe and not frightening and I think the old comedies do that. I'm all right on the straightforward stuff, but when I've got to do it standing on one leg, I keep falling off. <laughs> Your nuts are a bit stale, if you don't mind me saying so. You have them on the counter long. Anyway, that's about the size of it. Oh, look at the head on that. If you ask me, nothing much has changed. Would you put those away now, please? What we enjoy here in Britain is a nice bit of How's Your Father, a bit of the other, and best of all, a rub down with a damp spontex. Or is that just me? You certainly couldn't get away with, I don't think anyone would want to try to get away with the kind of suggestiveness and, and campness of, of some of the shows in the 70s. I mean, you know, the John Inman, um, the I'm free and all that kind of, I mean, you know, try that these days and I think you'd be laughed out. I'm free, I'm free, I'm free. Um, uh, and, you know, to have a, uh, have a, have a char central character who's constantly in search of a pussy. I mean, yeah, please. It's a wonder I'm here at all, you know. My pussy got soaking wet. <laughs> I had to dry it out in front of the fire before I left. Well, I'm very happy for Mrs. Slocum's pussy. Personally, I'm off home to stretch out on an afghan and stroke my fanny. Oh, no! 